is very good business. So, mm -hmm. hey, April, I know you're not there. Shout <laughs> <laughs> out to April Tracy if you're looking for a printer. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, so therefore, I'm not restricted to the sizes anymore, mm -hmm. and uh, I can make my pieces bigger. And one of the things that you're doing now with your wallflower series is originally you you'd focus on a single figure but now you're moving on to uh multiple figures in this yes series. and the, i see the one behind you that, that we have in the show <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll show you a better picture of it in a second yeah so could you tell us about how you've decided to go from um single figures to focus on to now uh two figures figures in each of these pieces well you know it was just it was just one of those thoughts i said to myself why are you just limiting yourself to one figure when you could do more than one mm. and so that's when i drew a, um two pods together and uh that's you know that's the one that's in the show is the first one and i have one here on the table that i'm playing with now and who knows maybe i'll there'll be more of them at some point mm -hmm. yeah nice and um so you also have in the show a sculpture yes ms, ms. ms. Am ambivert yes and, and that, you know what that means right <laughs> some people call it schizophrenic <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know, it means you have you have two different personalities. <laughs> You're a combination of an introvert and an extrovert, mm -hmm. which I think I am. Yeah. You know, I can I can hide with the best of them. But if I'm comfortable, you know, you can't shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> so so Ms. Amavert, she's she's um she's very 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 beautiful sculpture. Um, mm -hmm. And she really is a combination of assemblage, assemblage, mm -hmm. and collage, and in this three-dimensional realm. But it's still a very big jump from two-dimensional work. And I guess my question to you was: Did, did you have a planning strategy involved going into uh, the, the, uh, creating the sculpture, mm -hmm. or and, and what that was like? Well, I wanted. Um at, I was doing the wallpaper, uh, the wallflowers, and I said, wouldn't it be great if there was a, a wallflower, something that went with the series, that wasn't exactly like the series, but used the same components mm. as the series. So um, this, this, I had this in my, my spare bedroom. I had a dress form that my cousin had given me. It's um, it's a vintage dress form. And I said, oh, I know, I'll just dress her up. So I started cutting out scallop pieces of wallpaper. And I said, this would make a great skirt. I even gave some to some of my friends and said, cut those out. <laughs> because it's like, I'm sure there's more than a hundred in her skirt. And then I, I incorporated the leather in her cape and some beads that I made. And years ago, I made a mask at, at a workshop in, in Montclair. And so I said that would be a good thing. But a friend of mine also years ago who used to teach with me was practicing making uh, uh, with the plaster. Mm. And he asked me if I would come over and so he could practice, you know, making a plaster um, mask mm -hmm. and so he did he made one for me i took it home and it stayed in a box and then i said oh i know i'll put my face as the face of miss mm -hmm. amber Heard. so would you consider her a little bit of a self-portrait well she looks like me which is creepy <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, because for a long time she was, you know, in, in that other room, and my little grandson wouldn't sleep in there because mm -hmm. of her. But she didn't have the face; it was just a dress form. He was just afraid of that. Well, but, that, that um, might, might be a little creepier. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, but she, oh, she has on a bustier under there. She has on real under garments under mm -hmm. there with a lace bustier, a red one. And, you know, I didn't just throw stuff on the form. I dressed her, actually. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's fully dressed underneath there. But there might be more than 100 scallops wow. to make the skirt. Mm -hmm. And how did you adhere mm -hmm. those scallops onto the form? Um, some of them I actually sewed on because the form that I used to make her skirt is chicken wire. Okay. So what I did was I made a long row um, um, of fabric and put the scallops along that row, wrapped them around, sewed them to the chicken wire. Then I did another row. Wow. And that's how, that's how her skirt is made. Do you have an estimated time frame of how long it took you to make, make it? Mm. Well, since... Since I already had everything, the 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 work, the intensive work part was making the skirt and making the cutting the um, the scallops. So it might have taken me three weeks to make her nice mm -hmm. to find everything that I wanted. You know, in addition to the things that I already had, because mm -hmm. I went shopping for her undergarment. You know. <laughs> you really you 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 really did dress her. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I I always I don't know if I wrote it in my my bio, but I used to love to do paper dolls. Mm. I would make my own paper dolls and make their own fashions. Oh, nice. And I had a friend Billy Webb. I wish I knew where he was. He and I could do paper dolls for hours. Mm. You know, and uh so it's 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 like dressing a doll. Nice. So that that's Miss Amberford. So she has bits and pieces from other work that I took apart to make her. That's really and, cool. Especially the thing the thing that's on her on her head. And and you said that's you consider that to be a crown, correct? Yeah, yeah, I would say it's a crown or a headpiece. Let's a head say piece. it's a headpiece. Yeah. <laughs> yes, more more of a headpiece than than a crown. Um, and, and, uh, it didn't look exactly the way it looks on the other piece as it looks now because I added things to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, that's Miss Ambervert. That's so exciting. So, mm -hmm. we're in your studio. Mm -hmm. and we are excited to take a tour of okay. what, of what, uh, you have on your walls and what you're working on and yeah. and while while uh, beverly is touring around the studio if anyone has any questions please feel free to type them in and i'll read them to her <laughs> okay i'm gonna try to try oh there we go nice. mm. i'm gonna try to get this so you can see this piece this is one of my butterfly pieces i, I hope it's not too much glare on it but that's her. Oof. Let me see. Let me go this way. It's too much glare. Okay, I'll just stay right here. But she's in a box within a box. Oh, so that's she's in, she's in her own world. She's sitting on a chrysalis right there. Mm -hmm. There's a big chrysalis. And this is one of just one of my paper collages. And she's it's sitting on a chrysalis. And there are her wings behind her. And her, her hair also has wings, butterflies in it. Oh, wow. Is this, yeah. one of, is this an earlier piece, Beverly? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And so within her space, like I said, if you could see it clearly, it looks like this whole thing, this piece is floating in outer space. Yeah. But she has within her within her space she has her own ecological system so she has the moon within her space right here wow and there are trees and there's buddha oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's in there <laughs> yeah so that this is from this is from my butterfly series 
series. And what's that, the title of this? Um, my World. It's My, my World. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, here's the piece that's in the show. If you can see it good. Try to get the light on it. Okay. This is the piece that's in the show. This is my first piece with two figures. And as you can see there intently, the younger figure is looking into the eyes of the older figure. And I'd like to think that it could be mother daughter. It could be um, a little girl with a mentor. But the mother figure is sharing information through her eyes mm. to the young girl. And I love feathers. So those are feathers on their headgear and abalone shells going around. Nice. And is that like a, is there a strip of leather, leather on the younger figure's yes. face? Right here. Oh, okay. Right there? Yes. And I meticulously made all those little spirals and banged the crap out of them. <laughs> what are those they are And th this is an example of a piece of wallpaper that was smaller, and I had April blow it up for me. Nice. To larger. Okay. Now, let me see. This is what I'm working on now. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Like I say, I like expressions. <laughs> None of this is adhered yet, you know, so I can pick it up. Yeah. But I like to work out, you know, I like to work out what I'm going to do first before I commit to gl gluing things down. Yeah. And like that other piece, this is a piece of paper that April blew up for me also. And, you know, it has a background. This is matte, mm -hmm. matte board. So what I did was I had paper this color and I adhered it to the back of the original piece of wallpaper and when she shot the picture, it became part. Oh, okay. So, you know, you don't feel any delineation between mm -hmm. this paper and that paper. But this paper, you can't see it to what, oh yes, yeah, texture. It just oh, okay. has texture, you know? So, but that, but that's actually part of it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It wasn't. It wasn't originally. Yeah. But then, this wasn't originally a part of this. It was a piece of. I put that border around there. Okay. So when he took the photograph of what I gave her, it became one sheet. Oh, that's so clever. Mm hmm. Yes. All right. Moving over here. Okay. Now, um, like I said, I used to paint, and this is one of my portraits. Oh, wow. That I did. And I was just practicing with some watercolor, a water-based oil. Mm. And then I was just not going to finish this, and then I couldn't stop, so I finished it. And it's my a friend of mine. And this is another one. Well, you're a very talented painter, Beverly. <laughs> I'm not going to do it anymore. I don't care what you want. <laughs> and here is, oh, wait a minute. Let me get some light on the subject. Here's Miss Amber Vert. Beautiful. I'll go close up so you can see. So how did you create the embellishments for the, um, the headpiece? Okay, um, this this piece right up here, excuse me. Okay, this piece right up here is one piece of fabric. And I would, I go in the fabric stores and if they have stuff laying around that did pieces of things, remnants of things, I buy them. Because mm. you never can tell. <laughs> yeah. And so 
um, I bought this and, and I put it around another mask that I'd made. But then when I did Miss Ambervert, I embellished it even more. I put, I found that the, the um, Central Fabrics in East Orange has boxes and you can go in there and dig around and find stuff. Nice. And so that's where I found the big turquoise thing. And then that's my face. And then this is the tree of life with some small beads that I made. You know, you roll the paper. Yeah. And, you know, I just threw them, threw them in a box. And then I said, when I was embellishing her, I just went to my stash. Ooh. This is the stash area. You'll have to show us the stash. <laughs> the stash. Okay, so I'll back up so you can see her skirt. Nice. So that's her skirt. It goes all the way around. Now, did you did you treat it's the tied with a ribbon? Hmm. I was I was going to ask. Did you treat the scallops with um any sort of um? No. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I just cut them out and sewed them on the strips of fabric, yeah. and uh, then sewed them to the chicken wire. Yeah. I, I was, was going to ask if you um put put something on top of it to like um to seal it in case it got wet or something like that. Now, why are you saying this? <laughs> you, you, you're going to make me take her dress off. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll be undressing her and sealing all those 95,000 scallops. <laughs> Can I ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this piece I showed before, this is one of my... There's a church that they tore down in Newark. Mm. Can you see it? Yes. It's the whole piece. And there are little candles inside so you can actually see what's going on. Oh, wow. This, these little figures are square nails. And I adhered the square uh, um, brass beads to the back so that they look like people who are marching around the big figure. Mm. That's a part of a light fixture up there. This, I made the wings from, you know, metal. And then my friend Diane, Feather Girl, mm -hmm. um, made that box for me um, out of, um, what's the wood? Old wood. That's not the name for it. That's not what everybody's calling it. But it's it's very rustic looking. Mm. And she made that. So I put handles on the side so you could pick it up. But it does hang on the wall. But uh, this show was what happens when a church dies. Oh, wow. And it was curated by Matt Gosser. Matt went to the site and collected all types of things that were rubble from the rubble. Mm. And he called, he did a call for artists with the stipulation that whatever you took, you had to create a piece for the show. Mm. So if you can see up at the top, you see the red and the yellow. Yeah. That's little pieces of broken stained glass from the stained glass windows. Oh, wow. And that statue was part, his little foot is broken off, but, um, and he's very heavy. Like I said, the blue is part of a light fixture. So mm. I was um, recuperating from a surgery, and my grandson and my daughter went down and collected um, all the pieces that I wanted. I had this frame, and it fit exactly around there for some oh, reason. Wow. So that was given to me by another artist friend, Marlene Ware. And, uh, and that's that piece. Um, right now, I'm going to just turn this around for a second. Right now, I'm working on a new series. Um, it's not necessarily collage, but it's assemblage. Mm -hmm. And it's a dedication to domestic workers. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll show you that in a second. I have to go into studio number two, which is my guest room. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's dedicated to all the domestic workers who, outside of cleaning other people's houses, had lives of their own. They had interests outside, but, you know, um, nobody was interested in that other than having them clean, wash, and do that, uh, you know, take care of little Harry. So, um, each box has a pocketbook in it, and the pocketbook symbolizes their interests, things that they might have kept in their pocketbooks that had to do with their lives outside of cleaning house. Mm -hmm. So, we'll go in the other room. Okay. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> If anyone has any questions for Beverly, feel free to write them in the feed. I did notice there was one question. I don't know if I can scroll back. It was from Denise Design. She was asking if the paint, one of the paintings you had shown was a, a, from some of someone particular. Yes. My, uh, it's my friend, uh, Mumtaj Brown, who is a judge. The painting. I have others, but that's the one that I was experimenting with. Okay. Let's see. Okay. This is the box on top is a big spool of thread. Wow. And this is the box of the woman who loved sewing and knitting. Like my grandma. My grandma was a dressmaker. So outside of the boxes... Um, I'll show you, not, I'm going to do this one first because I didn't get to that part yet. Inside of the boxes are photographs of relatives that they might have had. And that's my grandma. Oh, nice. So in her box, you have all the vintage things that a lady might have used in her bag, carried in her bag so that she could work do a little something at lunch. So I found vintage um, items like thimbles, these little needles right here, the price on them is 15 cent. Mm. And here's an old vintage simplicity pattern, which was 35 cent. If you can see the dresses, that's the kind of dresses they wore during that time. And some vintage scissors. And a mother showing her daughters how to sew. But each side of the box has pictures of relatives. There's a little young lady right there. Can you see her? She's sewing. Yeah. And then there's other pictures of little girls knitting. But that's her. And this is a box whose this lady was a church lady. Mm -hmm. Her life was geared around the church. So she has a patent leather pocketbook, some gloves, her eyeglasses, and some little pearl earrings. Up here is songs from the hymnal, hmm. I Must Tell Jesus. There's a church fan from the funeral home, of course. Hmm. And that picture of the church was actually the church that I grew up in when I was a little girl. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then you have her change purse and her little Bible, pocket Bible. And if you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm still learning Instagram live. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> but um so hopefully more people will join in as as that happened I, again i apologize <laughs> hey beverly i'm sorry that happened it, i that did not happen last time <laughs> yeah but it does i saw a um i saw a video with uh the leader pinchback martin and oh, they yeah. cut her off and they got jumped back on again too yeah but luckily i do have a my, my tech guy promised me he's recording it, so hopefully. And then all, 
Now, now my volume is doing a weird thing. That's, can you hear me? I hear you. Okay. Up uh, oh, there it goes. Okay. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> okay, but it looks like we're getting people back on, and um, I oh, guess there's a question. Okay. About the back, uh, the in the back of the the box, the church lady that was also wallpaper. I wallpapered the backs of each of the boxes, and and that's what that is. Nice. And someone else is asking, are the boxes functioning as time capsules of societal traditions? Yes. Yes. Um, and, and the fact that all of the things within the boxes are vintage. Um, I have, um, in this series, they're going to be, in my head right now, six ladies. Um, and... Along with the boxes, I've been collecting stories from women who either were domestic workers or maybe they had relatives, their mother, their grandmother. And those, this whole um, series will be an installation piece. So they will not be shown separately. They'll all be shown together along with the short stories that um, people have shared with me. And, and I'm putting out if you have a story you'd like to share um, to be added into um, into the piece, uh, I'm glad I'll gladly accept. I've I've got some good stories. I've got some sad stories. I have some funny stories, and uh, I'm really excited about this. I'm going to be working on this all summer, so Science. you may not see me. <laughs> I'll just tell you that right now. So if someone wanted to share a story with you, how would they contact you? Okay. Um, you can contact, if you contact me on, um, I'll give you my, my email address. But, you know, if you jump on Facebook and say, I want to talk to you, then, you know, we can message each other and, and get in touch. Same thing on Instagram. Nice. But my email address is... B A dot McCutcheon zero six at yahoo.com. Nice. I also have a website with, and the address for my website is the same as Instagram, Beverly McCutcheon Art dot com. Nice. And, and, and on my website, you can see um, my other pieces. Beautiful. And um, was there, we got we got cut off so so suddenly. Was there more in your studio you wanted to share with us? <laughs> well, um, you know, I have piles of things around in here. Unfortunately, a lot of my work is stuck in galleries. Mm. Um, yeah. You know that I would have shared with you is caught up in the gallery. Uh, but what I can show you is the original wallflower. Mm. This was your first, you your, your first one? Yes. Okay, I'm excited to see this. Okay. Let me turn this around. Here she is. This is the one that I was telling you about. Where my sister, you see it's black on black, so it would mm. be difficult. I'll go up close. So that... That's a black background, and that's a long strip of black leather. And when I saw that hole, I said, oh, I could put a face in there. And that's what I did. I call her Layla, which in Hebrew means night, evening. And then I embellished her with um, textured, textured leather. Wow. Going here and all the way down. Oh wow! And taste, and those are the flowers that I told you that were they were X-rays of, of flowers. We're losing your audio, Beverly. Because you know I love cutting, <laughs> and I cut those flowers out. And when I went over them with the gloss, with the uh, medium, they turned like a really pale. Pale uh, blue. So that's the original wallflower. 
beautiful. Layla. And, and it was after I did her that I decided to, um, it was after, I, that's what it looks like. Wow. It was after I did her that I decided I'm going to make a whole bunch of wallflowers. <laughs> nice. And we have a question from uh, DST's uh, Pro. He's at, uh, they're asking, does color have meaning in your pieces? Um, not really. I will, when I go to, let me turn this around. I'm not talking to black Okay. When I go to the leather store, there's, there's a couple of leather stores in particular that I use um, in the city. I think they're on um, 35th Street, West 35th. And they have remnants. And I just dive in. But I try to use colors. Um, some of them, some of the colors are dark, but I try to use bright, bright colors, you know, and, and, and then the wallpaper, sometimes that you can see that color comes out in the wallpaper. Nice. Oh, and uh, uh, these these pro uh, is, is Don Stevens, who I've met before. Hey, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about Don. <laughs> but Beverly, I think you know Don too, right? I don't know, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Philadelphia based artist. <laughs> oh, Don. Hi, Don. I'm coming out there. Oh, I, 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 had, um, I had work at the um, Color Girls Museum in Where? Philadelphia. Oh, nice. In a show that was curated by Labette Ballard. Oh, beautiful nice! Beautiful show. Yeah, beautiful show. Um, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming out there to that Philadelphia. I love Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. And while I'm at it, um, I, 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 I think we talked before that I wanted to mention some artists that really influenced me. Yes. And 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 I like. I, you know, it's the usual people, Romer Beard and whatnot, but there are artists who are living and breathing, whose mm. work just inspires me. Um, when when I look at their work, I have to run back here and work. Mm. And um, uh, as far as is Betty Saar, Betty Saar and Allison Saar, her daughter, love, love, love them. Anything that has to do with wood, I love wood and metal. Mm. Wood and metal. And um, I'm, I'm so glad that I got to see uh, Betty Sars exhibit this past uh, summer or fall. I can't remember when. And I'm so glad she's hanging in there, you know. Um, and, and when I go, I'm, I'm going to go out to California uh, after the cootie are over and mm. and I think I'll invite myself over <laughs> <laughs> oh god maybe she'll let me in we'll see and uh, my my good good friend and wonderful artist Janet Taylor Pickett mm. I love oh Janet's work I love her work but I also love Janet because she is a wonderful wonderful mentor mm. I saw her name. She was Janet. on the Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and um, Deborah Roberts. Have you seen her work? I'm writing her name Deborah down. Deborah Roberts. I love her collages. I love. She she does stuff with little kids. I love it. And um, before he passed away, um, I had a friend in uh, Detroit who um, not only has some of his work. Um, but um, she she had a gallery, and, and and that's Benny Andrews. He was such a nice man, and he mm. shared stuff with me too. You know, nice. I was telling him how I was interested in collage, and he said, "Well, keep it up, honey, keep it up." <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. And uh, let's see. Oh, Judy, Judy Bowman, I love her work, and I love her mom. She has a little mom. Her little mom, I love her. <laughs> she helps her with her work sometimes. So, oh, and let me not forget Roz Nichols. Nickel, I keep putting an S at the end of Roz's name. Roz mm. is not only, uh, um, she, 
Roz is a wonderful paper maker, excellent mm. paper maker. So, though, right now, those are some of my favorite people. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don Stevens is asking about bell hooks. How about bell hooks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Hey, Roz. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Beverly, um, we're, we're, we're winding down. I wanted to ask, do you have anything um, that you'd like to share with us that um, your uh, things are coming up for you, upcoming events on, you mm -hmm. know, virtually that you'd like to plug or anything of that nature? Well, right now, I have, I have work in a very interesting show that hopefully, uh, you know, when they open back up, it's in Dover. Oh, gosh. And um, mm, all of a sudden, I forget. But uh, I'll, I'll put it on my Instagram or something. But it's a very interesting show whereby you don't tell the viewers the name of your work. Mm. And they have to come up with names for your work. And I'm going to show you the piece that's there. It's a... This, this, this piece. Nice. So that's all pencil. So that's the piece that's in that show. I can never remember the name of the the, the establishment, but um, and then I have I have work also at the atrium in Morristown. Hmm. Is there? There's still work in Montclair. Um, so, um, I, you know, I'll I'll post where things are, so that you know when everything settles down. Yeah. Um. And be sure okay. to follow Beverly on her Instagram, guys. <laughs> oh, yes, look at Instagram. I love Instagram. <laughs> You're right. There's not a whole lot of yip yapping and yapping and that little that. I love Instagram. <laughs> Nice. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody who came. Oh, there's Check. my son. <laughs> oh, honey, bunny, I'm gonna call you. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us with BSB yeah. Gallery and Beverly McCutcheon, one of our current exhibiting artists. We have um, three more events coming up for this exhibit. Uh, this Saturday, Theta Sandiford is going to be doing yarn wrapping on Zoom with us. If you're interested, you go to our Facebook and. Uh, uh, there's information on how to how to get ready to, to yarn wrap at Theta. And um, then this following Tuesday, we're doing another studio tour and artist talk with Josie Love Robeck, uh, Tuesday, June 2nd at 7 p.m. And then Kamika Patton will be at June 11th, Thursday at 7 p.m. on Instagram Live for both of those events. Uh, be sure to go on our website, bsbgallery.com, and you'll be able to travel around the virtual exhibition to be able to get an up-close view of everyone's artwork, too. And